Imagine that you have wings and that you have only one opportunity to get away from the cruel and merciless winter weather. Imagine that if it were not for those wings and a gene that appears every fourth generation to direct your destiny, you would perish almost immediately. Imagine that to get to the sanctuary that will keep you safe for most of your life, you have to fly more than 3,000 miles. But bear in mind that you only weigh half a gram and you have to retrace a lost route that was marked in the wind by your ancestors four generations ago. Now stop imagining and fix your eyes on the monarch butterfly. Being a perfect example of implacable resilience, the monarch butterfly is one of the most recognizable and well-studied butterflies on the planet. Its orange wings are laced with black lines and bordered with white dots. Their intrepid journey is nothing short of amazing. They are recognized for their seasonal migration. Millions of monarchs migrate from the United States and Canada, south to California and Mexico, for the winter every year. This beautiful species is native to North and South America, but they've spread to several other warm places where milkweed is found. Enjoy all the enjoyable. Monarchs in North America are divided into two main groups. The Western Monarchs, which breed west of the Rocky Mountains and overwinter in Southern California. And the Eastern Monarchs, which breed in the Great Plains in Canada and overwinter in Central Mexico. There are also populations in Hawaii, Portugal, Spain, Australia, New Zealand, and a few other places. The female monarch butterfly lays each of her eggs individually on the leaf of a milkweed plant, attaching it with a special glue she secretes. A female usually lays between 300 and 500 eggs over a two to five week period. After a few days, each egg hatches into larvae, also known as caterpillar. The caterpillar's main purpose is to grow. Therefore, they spend most of their time eating. The female lays her eggs on milkweed leaves and only milkweed leaves because that's all they eat. The caterpillars keep on eating for about two weeks, and then they spin protective cases around themselves to enter the pupa stage, also known as chrysalis. They finish their metamorphosis and emerge as fully formed adult monarch butterflies about a week or two later. Monarch butterflies do different things depending on when they complete their metamorphosis. If they emerge in the spring or early summer, they'll start reproducing within a few days. But if they're born in the later summer or fall, they know winter is coming and it's time to head south for warmer weather. The closer we get to the top, the more butterflies we see. And this is supposed to be like a 40 minute walk and the uphill is pretty steep so come prepared bring a good bottle of water because it is quite 
a heavy load here. But we're getting closer. That's good. It's always good news. Let's do it. Let's do it. Monarch's colorful pattern makes them easily identifiable. Their distinctive colors warn predators. They're not only foul tasting, but poisonous too. This poison comes from their diet. Milkweed itself is toxic. But monarchs have adapted not only to tolerate it, but to use it to their advantage by storing the toxins in their bodies and making themselves poisonous to predators. In the east side, only those monarchs that emerge in late summer or early fall make the annual migration south for the winter. They know it's time to abandon their breeding grounds. As the days get shorter and the weather cooler, in the northern U.S. and Canada, and head south to the mountains of central Mexico, where the weather is warmer and more suitable for them. This journey can be as long as up to 3,000 miles. There, they gather together on Oyamel fir trees to wait out the winter. Once the days start growing longer again, they begin to move back north, stopping every now and then along the route to lay their eggs. Then the new generation continues farther north and stop to lay their own eggs. This process may be repeated over four or five generations before the monarchs have reached Canada again. Western monarchs head to the California coast for the winter, stopping at one of several hundred known spots along the coast to wait out the cold. When spring finally comes, they disperse across California and other western states. The question here is, how do monarchs make such a long journey? They use the sun to stay on course, but they also have a magnetic compass to help them navigate if the day happens to be a cloudy one. And last but not least, they follow the trail left behind of dead butterflies, those that came before them. So if you ever encounter one of these dead butterflies on the ground, do not remove it. It will help the new generation get to its destination. Research suggests that these butterflies owe their long-distance migration to one gene honed for efficient flight. But this gene will only be present every fourth generation. That is, in the generation that will take the long trip to central Mexico. The study also revealed that a single gene plays a big role in Monarch's signature orange and black coloration. And a flip of this genetic switch 
is responsible for the unusual white monarch butterflies of Oahu. In the backdrop to the study, the iconic butterflies number have been dropping dramatically. Down to 33 million in 2013, a decline tied to a drop in milkweed they depend on. The team also tested butterflies' flying abilities in test chambers, and respiration sensors found that migratory monarchs flew most efficiently, but not most powerfully. Migrating butterflies are essentially endurance athletes, while others are sprinters. The sprinters may need to outcompete other bugs for food, while migratory ones fly to places where they face less competition. Conservation groups have petitioned the U.S. government to add the monarch butterfly to the endangered species act list. While a decision has not yet been made, it's clear the species is in decline, facing a number of threats. Western monarchs have declined by more than 99% since the 1980s. Eastern monarchs have declined by an estimated 80%. The disappearance of milkweed is a major reason for their population's decline. Milkweed, which is the only place monarchs will lay their eggs and the only food caterpillars will eat, used to grow in and around agricultural crops. The systematic removal of milkweed from fields in recent years as well as increased use of herbicides and mowing alongside roads and ditches has significantly reduced the amount of milkweed available. Climate change is also a concern for several reasons. Monarchs are very sensitive to temperature and weather changes. So climate change may affect biological processes, such as knowing when to reproduce and to migrate. It's also creating more extreme weather events, which negatively affects their overwintering habitats, the availability of milkweed in their breeding habitats, and their survival directly. Too hot or too cold, and monarchs will die. While monarchs may seem small and insignificant, the creatures play a crucial role in the ecosystems they inhabit. As adults, monarch butterflies visit countless numbers of wildflowers each year as they seek out nutrient-rich nectar. In doing so, the monarchs transfer pollen from one plant to another and assist in those species' reproduction. And even though monarchs, caterpillars, and adults are poisonous to most predators, thanks to toxins they acquire from milkweed, some animals are still able to stomach them. Orioles and gross beaks, in particular, make a feast of monarchs over the winter. And ants, wasps, flies, and spiders have been known to prey on the caterpillars when they get the chance.
come well prepared for the climb because it takes close to an hour to get to where the highest concentration of butterflies is. Though you will encounter the beautiful butterfly all along the way, more and more as you get higher and higher. Remember to always respect the butterfly and its habitat. Don't touch them and don't speak too loud if you are getting close to them. Also be very careful not to step on them because they might be on the ground as well. But above all, enjoy this awesome display of creation and know how blessed we are to be able to be here.